Ah, uh, we 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 were together last time, and it was so encouraging to share the word of God. Remember, the topic is start now. You are with God. Don't delay again. And because of time, I'm Bishop Peter Katimo. I love Christ. Christ is so real in all situations. The Bible says, Jesus in us, the hope of glory. Not, not Jesus outside you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And therefore, we need to have that. Our last part of this message, that is, uh, start now your work with God. I would like to share several points, and then we finish, and you will be encouraged. One, do not lose your confidence. The verse in the Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35, it says, Do not lose your confidence, for it has a great reward. There are things God cannot do if confidence is lost. You know, let me say this. There are things God will do if you keep the confidence. It's like a like doctor. There are things doctor cannot do. If the doctor is treating me and I die, that's all. The doctor said, no, I can't do anything in here. Or maybe um, if you lose your confidence and God wants to use you to win some battles, you deny God's chance to empower you or to enlist you as a soldier or to enlist you as a soldier for the next battle, the next area of warfare. And therefore, you know, there are times when God doesn't want to spend a lot of time on raising people. Now, he can only spend time on those who already have confidence because it's time for battle. And God is now preoccupied with battle. So if you've lost your confidence, you know, and it's time God wants people who have kept confidence, who have kept their, their patience and confidence. Now, God may not stay there Focusing on the lost confidence while it is time now for battle. And therefore, God will, like, because there's no time to waste, God wants to win battle after battle. God is saying, just keep the confidence, I'll supply the rest. It has great reward. Another thing, do not sleep. If you go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 25, you see this issue uh, uh, that Jesus just shared with the, his disciples. Uh, the Bible says, uh, trusting that you are able to access your Bible, uh, we are reading Matthew 13, Matthew 13, uh, verse 25. This, uh, mm -hmm. Verse 24, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, good seed. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tails among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tails also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in, the, in your field? How then does it have Tears. Tears. And he said, the enemy has done this. Then the servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? And he said, no, lest while you gather up the tails, you will sprout, you will uproot the wheat with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. Now there are things that happen uh, that, we, that we need to be very careful. If we follow this illustration of parable, the, the, the farmer planted pure seed wheat. But while the servants were asleep, the enemy clipped in and planted tails among the wheat, which, after they sprouted up and produced crops, it was hard to remove the tails and retain the wheat. Said, Let them grow together. There's no way we can separate them because we try to remove this one, we dummy the other one. And sometimes you notice 
some of the young people, some of the married people, some of the single mothers and single fathers, while you relaxed, that's when you lost your money. That's when you lost your son. That's when you lost your daughter. While you relax, you ignored. That's when something attacked your, your family. Something that even if it is healed, even if you, you solve it, it will, it will leave a scar, a very significant scar that will always affect you the rest of your life and you have to learn how to put up with it. You, do you know in families we are staying with things that, that were planted by the enemy while we were, we were asleep, character, habits in our children, while we were asleep. You know, I remember one time, uh, this girl is a firstborn, and he used to be their pastor. And the parents had some problem, the pastor and the wife. And they spent a long, long time in struggle. And maybe the, the father also went to work somewhere away. In the prime time where the children needed him. And after that, all the children were affected. They married, they just eloped away. And, you know, some were involved in drugs. Those who got married and get problems. The other day, I remember the firstborn came, came to me and said, Bishop, if we remained with you as our pastor, the way you used to raise us, if our parents remained with you and we, you just remained our bishop and the way you loved us, we would not have lost our lives. You know, when the parents reacted, had their funny issues, uh, they went away. But the children did not want that. They were being well nurtured in the church. Hey, they, they were praise team leaders. They were performing well academically. You know, some time parents misbehave not knowing. It's not their season. It's the season, season of their parents. There are times we need to take care because we grew up. But now it's the season of our children. We should not affect them. They should not be affected because we are living to raise them. We are living to make them become. And therefore, please do not sleep. Try your best. Don't allow people to influence you. Don't allow devil to provoke you. Live a life whereby, personally, you are so responsible, so much awake in prayer, so much awake in mind, so much awake in performance, so much consistent that you never miss the projects you are you are, you are entrusted with or you, are, you embark on yeah. so much you, you follow up even God says in Hosea chapter 6 verse 3, 3 and 4 you will know if you follow on to know God demands consistency and then something else we need to be very careful go back again for a deeper meaning this is a, a verse that I always insist we read that is Mark chapter 4 verse 10 yes you remember uh, when Jesus gave the parable of the sour, eh? how the, feed, the, the, the seed fell in different soils. There are a group of people who are closer to him who went to see him in private later. And he said, you people who have come to see me in private, in a solitary place, and you are demanding for the meaning, you have the right now to know the mystery of the kingdom. One thing that we need our walk with God. There's a place in our walk with God. We need the mystery of the kingdom. I say, for us to overcome the complicated life and technology and evil, intertwined evil, intertwined confusing society, we need also to get deeper. And, and God give us the mystery of the kingdom for now. And God will do that. That's very important. If you go to Matthew 17, verse 20, verse 20, that is Matthew 17, verse 20. The Bible says, So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. Disciples were asking, Why did we fail to cast out a demon? Christ said, Because of your unbelief. Truly I said to you, 
If you have faith of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and you will obey. Nothing will be impossible for you. If you go to verse 30, the Bible talks about uh, something that, uh, that is verse 20, uh, Matthew, uh, verse 21, 21, yes. Nothing will be impossible with you. Now, however, that's verse 21. However, this kite does not go out except by prayer and fasting. You know, in, in the book of Matthew, this scripture is explicit. It's come out clearly. It says, nothing will be impossible with you. However, that kind of demon that failed to respond to your authority will, can only go out through prayer and fasting. Disciples learned. Be, before that time, they would just cast out demons. And Christ wanted them to know there are demons that they don't, need, they, don't, they, they don't need just to be cast out. They require that you stop casting them out and embark on some prayer and fasting. This kind of demon. And therefore you need to know in your walk, there are places that you demand that you demand that you stop everything, go for prayer and fasting. That's very important. Another thing, give allowance for new discovery and strength. If you go to Genesis 17 verse 1, God says, Abraham, let me introduce myself. He says, I am the almighty God. Be thou perfect. Walk before me and be thou perfect. God revealed himself as El Shaddai. Almighty God. All sufficient. Abraham, you don't need anything else outside me. If you go to Ezekiel, that 7 verse 1 and 2 and 3, eh? when, when God took Ezekiel in a vision to a valley of very dry bones and asked, son of man, can these bones live again? This man said, God, you know. Please give God a chance to review something. Don't terminate things because just because they are so complicated. You just say, hey, I've given up. I've come to the end. No, no, no. Don't terminate issues. This man would have said, it is scaling. It is, it, it is not comprehensive. It can, I can understand. It's good my mind. He did not say it's built his mind. He did not say it's not possible. Actually, if you look into it with your own mind, valley of very dry bone, and God is asking, can this become people again? Please, even if you can understand, whenever God is involved, give God chance. Ezekiel said, God, Lord, you know. And he found himself being used of God to prophesy to the dry bone. And eventually they became a huge army of living people. That's what very important. Eh? And Psalms 46 verse 10, Bible says, be still and know that I'm Lord. There are times when you need to be still. Give God a chance to train you that he is Lord. Another thing is, remain in his presence. Avoid crisis of faith. There are times, the only thing that you rescue me and you is the presence of God. We will never have, there are times that no, no knowledge, no ability can save us. Even our faith is just being in God's presence that can save us. And that's very important. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 27, towards the head, up to verse 31, Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall walk and not faint, they run and not be tired, and they shall mount up high. They shall fly like eagles. We are saying there are things that can only be solved by God's presence. Another thing is allowance for change. Allowance for change. Allowance for impartation. Yes, practice your gift. Practice your gift. As you walk, God will use you more. And God, you supply more strength when you practice your gift. Not when you do everything, everything. It's when you spend more time. You, you are more preoccupied with the gifting. That's why the Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 6, Timothy, stir up the gift in you. Timothy, stir up the gift in you. If you go to, to Mark chapter 8, verse 22, 
It is what we call the new touch, second touch. This man was blind, Christ touched him. And he said, I can't see well. I can see people walking like tree. And Christ said, come again. And he touched him again. And the Bible says, I now see everything clearly. Another thing, you need new strengthening. If you go to your knees and you are so desperate, you can't even pray. You are so much worn down. Don't learn. I will stay there. Christ had the same experience in Gethsemane. If you read Luke 22, verse 42 and 43, Christ said, the heart is willing, but the body is weak. And nature came and strengthened him. I still believe that nature is functioning now. You who go, you go on, on your knees, you give up so easily, I'm unable to pray. Stay there. I know these angels are numerous. God, God has so many angels to visit our prayer closets. When you, are, when you are languishing in pain, you are unable to pray, your mind is confused, don't learn away. In the process, even if you stay one hour there, like a foolish person, God knows you are there waiting for a touch. Let the angel of God who touched Jesus on that night, that dark hour, when he was a God of Gethsemane waiting for crucifixion, that angel, I still believe, I witnessed that angel in my life, strengthening at night, so in, the, in days of discouragement on, on my knees, and I tell you, you can't, sometimes I, I can't, you can't even say it's, it's me who was so down. That's, those are the days when I rise up and I can preach big crosses, but it is impartation by the age, the same age who imparted Christ. Do not live at the stronghold. Do not allow families, do not allow your business, do not allow yourself to live at a stronghold. Stronghold is, is a center of power. It's a center of power. In life, there are strongholds that have formed themselves for ages. Curses, strongholds, satanism. Please do not allow them to dominate you. Pray and you bring them down. You are born and you found a stronghold over your family. You relocate to a new area, you find strongholds in that area want to dominate you. Don't allow it. Pray and fast. Pray and pray until you take over. Never sit at a stronghold. Always come over them and destroy them. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Take a position of warfare. Romans 16, 20. And the Lord of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Yes. Ephesians 6, verse 13. Put, put on the whole armor. Take up the whole armor. This one talks about taking the weapons. Please, there are sections in our walk, our walk with God where God would like to see us fully armed. Fully armed. Ready, ready now to fight for God uses men uh, in his battles. That's very important. Overcome the two things mentioned in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Seen, seen that ensnares us, and anything that entangles us, everything that entangles us, and seen that ensnares us. Get rid of them. Because Jesus wants you to be engaged in a race. Yes. Another thing, top up your anointing. As you, as you live and live and live, you discover you're losing strength day by day. Don't just continue living, 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 doing things. Yes, go for top up. Even when you are driving in the highway, you stop a little bit and uh, refill your, uh, get, get more fuel. Get more fuel. After some journeys, Take your vehicle for service. The same with you with spiritual life. You need to top up your anointing. You have been to crusade. You have been these battles. Set aside some time. Let God raise you again. And that's what happened in Acts chapter 4 verse 29 to verse 31. You need to reserve anointing. Always, even if you are not doing anything, make sure you have reserve anointing. You are prayed until, even if you are swimming, you are out for a party. You are deep, deep in your heart, I have some reserve. Read that in Matthew 25. The foolish virgin did not have reserve oil. The wise virgin had reserve oil. When the, 
when they, when they, when they were required without notice, those who have reserved anointing, reserved oil, are able to respond. Something can happen. And the devil you know, you are not the way he thinks. You are wise. You always make sure you pray a lot. Even before you go, you, maybe you are going for an announcing. But even at such a time, I have prayed a lot. I still have some reserve anointing. When people are celebrating and things are okay, if the devil tries to come in, I have reserve anointing. I can even fight them during the holidays. Christmas holidays, when people are out there enjoying, I can react. I have kept some oil. That is very good. Keep what God specifically assigned to you. God will always assign to you something specific for you. Keep it. That's why Paul says at the end of the journey, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, I've run the race, I've finished the course, I've kept the faith. What Paul refers to finishing the course is accomplishing a specific task of calling. Yes. Finally, serve God with your whole heart. God can only respond to a whole heart. And God can only respond to a clear heart. I would like you to, to read Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 2 and 10. Deuteronomy 20 verse 16, Deuteronomy 11 verse 13, Deuteronomy 10 verse 12, God demanded real, real, whole heart prayer and ministry. That's what God demanded when people were entering the promise. I said, if you go there, you will serve with your whole heart, your whole strength and mind. That's what I want. And that's what God says in Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. Love God with all your heart. If you are to walk a journey with God and finish, that's required. And finally, you need a pure heart. Remember what God said in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. When Samuel was anointing a man after God's heart, and uh, Jesse brought those eh, big, big older brothers who he thought were qualified. And God said, No, no. Samuel, don't make a mistake. I, I the Lord, look into the heart. And the same Bible says, Bible says in Matthew 5, verse 8, Blessed are pure in heart, for they will see God. I said to you, keep your heart pure. This is one of the secrets of the ministry. You know, we can be preaching, we are all bishops, whatever. But it's good to keep. That's why among the disciples, one day, Christ spotted one. Let's see this one now. Christ spotted a disciple among, and he never said this about others. Look at uh, John chapter 2 verse 47. What Christ said about Nathanael. Is it 47? Uh, chapter 2. Uh-huh. Let's see. John chapter 2. You know, just check there, because of no time. You see Nathanael coming and goes, look at this Jew whose heart is pure. He he's, he's has, has a, good, a good heart. Another thing you need to notice is keep the discipline of the race. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, make, read that very well. That is, uh, it's very important that you read that. Let's see some of these verses. Uh -huh. That is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Paul talks about discipline of the race. Run your race to win. Don't just serve God. When you are organizing a Sunday service, when you are organizing a crusade, when you are organizing something, have an attitude of winning. Have an attitude of great things happening. God, you respond to that very well. May God bless us and keep us. And on your salvation, add what Paul says in Ephesians 1.17. Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Spirit of wisdom and revelation. That is required. On top of just being a good brother, a good sister, we will need to, uh, to add what Paul says. I pray that on top of becoming good brothers and sisters in Ephesus, add spirit of wisdom and revelation of knowing who God is. May God bless you as by God's grace, God's grace, 
Start now. And you declare, I'm going to walk with God. That's what God told me. In those three messages, make sure you go through, go through, go through. I may not have read all the verses, but in the chapter I mentioned, you get what I preached uh, about the walk with God. Father, I pray that any person who have watched this message, right at this point, will start a powerful walk with you. And you cause them and cause us to know how to go about it. I rebuke confusion. I rebuke sin. I rebuke demonic powers. I rebuke Satan and all his works. And set free all people who are receiving this word. In Christ we pray. Amen.